Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this from Iyama. It is a 24 inch IPS screen. It's a G Master Black Hawk. And as I said, it's an IPS 24 inch, it's 75 hertz and one millisecond response time. It's got a recommended retail price of £130 and we've got links in the description just below which will take you to the cheapest price available online in your country. Okay, so we've got the box of the monitor here. Let's just have a quick look at it. You can see some artwork on the front. You've got obviously the brand name there. It's a G Master. It's the G2440HSU. It says it's a one millisecond. That's the response time, 75 hertz. So obviously if you're gaming, that'll be like 75 frames per second. It's IPS panel technology. And on the sides, it just gives you the model numbers doesn't give you much information and then on the other side it tells you on here it's got adaptive sync 75 hertz one millisecond full hd ips panel it's 23.8 inches most mostly in the industry the class is 24 inches they like rounding it up it's hdmi and display port it's got a usb hub it's got, and we're guessing that's a headphone jack, so a pass-through for, for your headphones or earphones, as well as a speaker there. And you can see a picture of the actual monitor there. It may not be the easiest to see because it's a black monitor on a black background, but it gives you a rough idea. Okay, so this is what's inside the box. First of all, you've got the manual or the quick start guide, which no one ever looks at, but it's there anyway, just in case you wanted to. Uh, otherwise, inside the box, you have got a HDMI cable. No DisplayPort cable, though. You do have the power cable, so there's no power brick on this. The actual power supply is built into the screen, which uh, is good or bad, depending on the way you look at it. And you've also got a USB cable. That'll be for the USB pass-through, what makes it obviously turn into a hub. You've got a little clip which goes on the back of the stand, which is for the cable tidy. And you've also got the base as well. So the base is, and the stand is easy to fit together. It's basically attached back to that with a built-in screw on the bottom. And then you just slide this bit in there. And that's your monitor put together. If you do want to mount it, you can do. It's got a Visa wall mount connection on there, hidden under this plate. Just peel that off. We have your fingernail or uh, a small screwdriver, obviously be gentle. And you've got four screws already built in there. Unscrew those and you can use those screws to then attach this to a wall mount or desk stand or however you want to connect it up. Let's have a look at the rest of the back. You do have some holes here. I'm guessing they're going to be for the speakers. I don't see if anywhere else the sound's going to come out on here. You do have a little joystick here, it feels like a five-way, so that's for um, doing your menu. These are ha more handy than having about ten different buttons on the bottom, one for menu, one for brightness and so forth. So it's like a little joystick, and you've also got a power button there as well. It's got a Kensington lock on there, so if you want to attach it to, uh, obviously, a Kensington lock where it basically locks it into your desk so someone can't pinch it, you can do that as well. Connection-wise... You can see where you put your power cable. Obviously that's where the stand goes in. You've got a display port connection, HDMI, two USB ports, that's for uh, what's come from the hub, uh, which that's the hub cable there. And then you've also got a speaker connection there as well. So that would be for like a headset or for any reason you wanted to connect up external speakers to it. So it's more of a a pass-through from the speak uh, from the speakers what are built into this so otherwise at the front of it it says the brand on there it says it's got md3 sync i didn't see any mention of that on the box and it's also got uh, a few other bits and bobs on there including a qr code but all this does peel off there you go and as you can see from the monitor it is a thin bezel you can't really see the bezel it's that thin i'd say the bezel is probably only about a millimeter or one and a half millimeters wide so that's pretty good but otherwise we're going to plug this in have a look what it looks like and go from there okay as you can see we've got the monitor set up it's on our test rig 
The stand, looking at it, it is actually a plastic stand which does seem to have some metal on the inside, uh, but overall it's mainly, as you can hear, a plastic stand. But otherwise it looks fine, it does seem quite sturdy, but just watch bumping and banging anything what's plastic because it can be easy to break. It's easy enough to bang a keyboard up against it or something along that line. But otherwise, uh, let's have a look at the menu system. You can use the hat switch on the back, which is also known as joystick. It, if you press it in, it comes with the menu and then you can go left and right and select different things. If you press it in again, it will come in come up with the whole menu system so you can adjust your picture, contrast, brightness, you've got overdrive, it does disappear quite quick, there's probably a setting to change that in the settings. Uh, you can change the brightness, overdrives, advanced contrast, eco modes, blue light, reducer, black tuner, colour saturation, gamma, as you can see there's quite a bit and they've got your input selection as well, so auto, manual, HDMI, display port. You've also got audio settings, so you basically mute and turn it on and up. Uh, you've got store user settings, so you've got different user modes, what you can store settings, so if you prefer it when you're, let's just say, you're playing games at one setting, you can set it one way, save those settings, and then come back when you're doing something else, let's let it say a document or whatever, and you want the screen a bit brighter or duller, obviously you can adjust that and save it in, so you don't have to keep adjusting everything every time, you just go into the user mode and switch it between user mode 1, 2, and so forth. And as you can see, the menu does uh, disappear quite quickly on there. You've also got colour settings, so you can adjust the red, green, blue on there, how you want, and the colour temperate as well. And again, it disappears. A little bit too quick. Here we go. And then on there, you've got image adjust, language, you've got setup menu as well. Here we go. The time. It, five seconds is the default let's just adjust that to let's stick it all the way up 30 seconds so it doesn't go um on and off all the time so you've got opening logo you put a logo on there you've got amd free sync you can turn that on and off again amd free sync works on nvidia cards as well just go into your settings and you should be able to turn it on on your graphics card and you've got display information which is telling you at the moment it's running full HD, so 1920 by 1080 at 75 hertz, and it's connected up using the HDMI cable. And then you've got recall, which basically means reset uh, to factory default. So otherwise, that's what the buttons do on the back. Otherwise, the only other button is the power button, which I'm pretty sure you figure out what that does. Okay, as you can see, we've got the monitor up and running with a video. This is a 4K video, but it doesn't really matter because the screen can only display in 1080, but it just gives you an idea of the color depths and so forth on there. So the blacks look pretty black. Again, you can adjust how deep the blacks look on the menu system. And the colors look quite vibrant. They don't look too blue or too red. It looks fine out of the box without having to mess around. A lot of monitors, when you do get them, they, you have to tweak them about for the colours to look right. I had to do that with a, a LG monitor I've bought as well as a few others, a BenQ one and so on. But this one seems absolutely fine out of the box. Let's skip on to the next bit, just to give you an idea what the built-in speakers sound like. Again, this is going to be hard to hear. And the same with the picture, obviously, it's only going to display as good as the device you're looking at it on. Uh, but just to play some music, As you can see, it's loud enough, but it is quite tinny, definitely no bass to it, or if there is, you can't feel it or hear it. So it's ideal for probably office work, but if you're gaming, which this monitor is actually aimed at, I wouldn't probably use it. I'd probably just use the pass-through to plug my headset into, to be honest with you. If you're wanting a gaming monitor, I always think it's a bit strange when they put low quality speakers in it. If you're going to have a gaming monitor, you want sort of a gaming speakers with a bit of a subwoofer or whatever. Otherwise, just don't bother putting one in. That's my honest opinion there. But it gives you a rough idea. It is pretty flat, tinny, um, but it is loud enough. So you can 
easily see, oh, should I say hear what you can uh, what you're doing like uh, movies and stuff like that but it's not going to give you the best gaming experience in all reality now just to show you the difference between the Hertz and frame rates if you're not sure frames per second and Hertz team up together basically Hertz on a monitor so let's just say a standard monitor is 60 Hertz that means it can display a maximum of 60 frames per second yes they call it two different things to confuse everyone but it basically means the same thing so if you've got a gaming computer and you're running a game at 200 frames per second if your monitor is only able to do 60 hertz you're only actually going to see 60 frames per second even though the computer is able to run it at 200 so you're sort of losing out to be honest because you can't see the benefit so this monitor does go up to 75 hertz or 75 frames per second depending on how you want to look at it if you're not sure what the difference is, hit on the screen here, as you can see, it gives you some UFOs. That's if you can make out what they look like, but the UFOs skipping across the screen. Just showing you the difference between frames per second. So if you had a game running at 2.3 frames per second, it basically means it's not going to be very smooth. It's going to be juddering all the time. And the faster frames per second, the smoother it gets. So for example, 9.4, it's a little bit better, but you can still say it's a bit of a uh, Judder, and when you get up to about 19 38 frames per second it does smooth out a lot more but it does make the picture a little bit blurry but when you get up to that 75 you can see it's clearly a UFO it doesn't seem to be skipping and it doesn't seem to be that blurred bear, bear in mind you can get monitors a lot faster than this but you're not going to at probably 130 pounds so for 75 Hertz or 75 frames per second and depending on what you want to call it it's not actually a bad price because you're getting a bit higher than the standard monitor but again you're not obviously it's not affecting the price too much so it's ideal for a beginner gamer someone who wants it just a little bit faster than the standard 60 and which will make your image a lot smoother and clearer especially when you're doing fast movements especially when you're playing first person shooters or driving games and stuff like that it's going to make everything a lot smoother and it can actually help when you're playing games because it's a quicker response but saying that if you crap at playing games you'll still be crap at playing games it's only going to basically make it look a little bit better and give you a slight improvement now the screen does have a one millisecond response rate what that basically means it takes one millisecond for the image to get from your computer to your monitor so that means it's going to show the information quicker doesn't make it any real smoother so basically what you tell it to do from the mouse gets from the mouse to the screen quicker so there's less of a, a lag between the two so it makes everything a lot smoother most monitors are usually five milliseconds sometimes even slower than that for a normal desktop for just watching YouTube and doing documents absolutely fine but gaming you can again see a slight benefit to it and it means that when you are aiming at something and pressing your mouse button it's going to shoot the person in the head rather than just missing them fractionally and just uh, taking off their ear instead but otherwise again it's not going to make you better at gaming or should I say it won't make a bad gamer a brilliant gamer but it will help you improve a little bit as long as your PC is able to keep up so in conclusion there's basically three monitors in this range the 23.8 and 27 inch which are both HD as well as a 27 inch which has got a 1440p resolution so it's a, a slightly better resolution wise and they're all got that 75 hertz refresh rate um, they've got the one millisecond response on there the same with all of them it's got the IPS technology which gives you that srgb color range which basically makes it look extra nice and pop and more colorful and more vivid and then you've got the free sync technology as well uh, which is for amd cards but uh, on generally most free sync monitors they'll also work on nvidia cards as well using g-sync and this one did or at least it did on our graphics card and then you've got the black tuner so you can adjust the brightness of the dark shades so you can not just increase the 
like brightness of the screen you can actually uh, increase the darkness of the screen which is slightly different without affecting the brightness of something so it's ideal if you want to, uh, the screen to look really dark in certain things let's just say you're playing a horror game or a sci-fi game let's say something like aliens or something like that where you want it really dark corridors and stuff like that you can do that with that where a lot of monitors will look more gray than black this actually looks like proper black so altogether you've got a pretty decent monitor at a pretty good price in all honesty 130 pound for the 23.8 inch version so i can't really go wrong with this so i must say i do highly recommend this product